Hi everybody, welcome back to Grad Girl Rambles. It's Brianna here with a video for National School Psychology Week. So um, this week is National School Psychology Week and every year um, the National Association for School Psychologists kind of puts on this week. It used to be called, um, it used to be called SPA which is School Psychology Awareness Week, but now it is called NSPW National School Psychology Week. Um, and I thought it would be a good time for me to do a video um, about kind of like how I found school psychology. And I think I've kind of mentioned it before, but talking about why I decided to go into school psychology um, versus like clinical or counseling psychology. So um, I thought that I wanted to go into clinical psychology. Um, I think that's kind of where a lot of people start. Um, school psychology is not very well known. Um, a lot of people don't know about it and honestly school psychologists who are placed in schools um, only work with a subset of students. Um, yes you are in a school and as a staff member you are um, you know every student is one of our students. But specifically in your role, traditionally, um, you work with students who are eligible for special education services. So um, growing up, if you didn't really have any kind of interactions with um, the school psychologist or um, if you weren't eligible for uh, special education services, you probably don't know that you even had a school psychologist in your school. I definitely didn't. Um, I, I wouldn't know their name. I could pass them walking down the street and I, I would have no idea. But so, um, like I said, I was interested in clinical psychology and I was really interested in um, mood and anxiety disorders. Um, I think when I think about clinical psychology, it's kind of the main one that I think people kind of think about. Um, clinical is very um, well known. I think a lot of people, else, especially outside of the psychology field, regard it as like... Um, and this might be, um, you know, unpopular opinion, but it's like, you know, the, the, the top, the cream of the crop, like clinical is where it's at. Um, and there's nothing bad about clinical. I think it just is understanding that there are different subfields of psychology, especially when it comes to practicing. You also have counseling, you have school. And um, so I actually apply to clinical programs um, the first year that I applied to grad school. Um, and like everyone says, it is very competitive. Part of that competitive nature is that it is the most popular and the one that most people know. So I do think a lot of people who end up applying to other um, subfields of psychology end up applying to some clinical places first before finding the other um, type of psychology they're interested in. So I applied um, and I did get into one program, but I decided not to go um, because through the interview process, I realized that clinical psych was not what I wanted. Um, and the school specifically that I will not name, um, it was just kind of a hot mess of an interview day and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a place where I could see myself. So um, I um, declined the offer and then I took some time to kind of like refocus, so like, okay, Maybe clinical psych is not the way that I'm going to go. And so um, where I was working before, I was working at Kennedy Krieger in Baltimore, Maryland, um, and we had a school psychologist on staff. So if you're familiar with Kennedy Krieger, it's not a school. They do have schools in the system, but I worked in a research slash clinic center. Um, and so the school psychologist we had on staff was not doing like traditional school psychology things. Um, we were in the research department and we did, um, we were in the autism center. So um, what I saw her doing was um, doing evaluations for our research studies, um, doing some community-based things um, with local schools and daycares, things like that. But um, when I talked to her about school psychology kind of in general and what that looks like, um, it was something that I had never heard of before and I was really interested in um, how I won't say easily but having access to students to children youth adolescents whatever when they're in school gives you way more access so they spend so much time in school and when you think about 
um, the outside services. Um, people who usually get services, um, like psychological services outside of school, um, a lot of them have access, they have the means, they, they have the knowledge to um, kind of go pursue those things. Um, but in a school, you know, you're in the building with them, you have direct access to them, and you're able to kind of help them in a way that you may not be able to if you work outside of a school and they don't even come to you in the first place. Um, so I was really interested in that. I was also interested in learning more about special education services. Um, I have a, I had a very kind of like basic understanding of what goes into it, but even just like the um, the like legality of it all, the guidelines for determining if someone is eligible for services, what kind of services or what kind of um, classification would students um, kind of be uh, identified under um, if they are eligible for services or what happens for students who aren't eligible for services but they need some kind of accommodation, some kind of supports. Um, and I was really interested in that, especially when you think about how um, so many students don't have, um, like their academics are heavily impacted by other variables in their lives and I really wanted to kind of get into that. I'm also really interested in um, mental health in schools. That's something that I think people have kind of pushed off in the past and um, at least right now within the context of this pandemic, um, schools are focusing more on mental health in schools and I think that's really important um, because we know that, you know, your mental health is going to impact your academics you know it's a two-way street it works both ways um so i was really interested in that and so when i spoke with her um she kind of gave me more insight i was also working with um another research assistant at the time who was applying to school psych programs when i was applying to clinical so um she started her program the year before me in um, 2018 um, so kind of just talking to her throughout the year to kind of see like, okay, well, you're in your first year of training, like, what's that like? Um, when she was practicing some of her assessments, I was actually one of her practice people, which was great because I had never, as far as I know, I had never seen a cognitive assessment before. So it's not like, you know, I could ruin anything by being um, a test person while she was kind of learning how to do them. And even just seeing... Um, what assessment looks like um, was really cool to me. So even though, you know, I was just there to answer some questions, seeing the way that it was administered was really interesting. And I think assessment um, is really cool in that way. But I think that there are a lot of things that um, people don't understand about school psychology. And um, there is definitely a need um, for school psychologists and I feel like I'm talking really fast. I don't think I talk fast. Don't I talk fast? That's probably a question for my friends. Anyway, when I decided to apply to school psychology programs, I applied to uh, six programs. So I didn't apply to as many. Um, I do regret applying to a bunch of clinical programs because, you know, the advice is it's competitive, so you have to go overboard and apply everywhere. But with school psych, I was like, okay, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet. Let me just apply to six. Um, and I got into a couple and I chose MSU. And I really appreciate the training that I'm getting. Um, and I kind of wish that I had focused, I had lear learned more about school psychology before coming here. Um, it's a really great experience and I'm getting a lot of different training experiences. Um, but I think everybody who's interested in the practicing side of psychology should consider school psych. Um, it's this little hidden gem of a field. And um, you don't have to only work in schools. I think that's where a lot of people kind of, mm, um, there are different degree types, so if you um, get like a master's or a specialist level, those people tend to work in schools primarily, but in some states you're able to do private practice. And for me, at the PhD level, 
my options are very open, which honestly makes it very stressful for me thinking about like goal planning. But um, you have options. I could potentially work in um, a hospital, a community setting. I could do private practice if I wanted. Um, but it's just something to think about. Um, I wanted to do this video for National School Psychology Week because I don't know that I have that many school psych specific videos. Um, and I should probably do more about that because that was the whole point of this um, channel was to expose more people to school psychology. So with that being said, um, thanks for watching. And I just wanted to show off my little mug. It's probably backward. But um, this was actually a gift from the school psychologist that I worked with um, when I got into my program. So there it is. Um, but I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about school psychology, let me know. I'm also going to link resources from NASP um, in the description box. But thanks.